Excel has done an insane number of updates over the last five years, and we're halfway through the decade now, so I thought I'd make a video where we go through my top ones, and I haven't done all of them because I do want to keep this video of a decent length, but I think you'll like what I have. If you want to learn more about any of these features, then I have longer videos about them, but this is a quick whistle-stop tour. So let's get going. So to start off with, you can select these cells, and then you can go to the data tab and choose data validation. This is not a new feature. You go to list and source, but the way that it transpires is much better. So if you leave a few blanks, it will just show one because it ignores duplicates. And also you have autocomplete. So if I start typing JA, it will give me the two options for JA, Jack and Jared. That is something that is new. All right, I'm going to expand this and we have translate. So with translate, I can write equals translates like this. And then you get the text, which is this one. And then you have the source language and the target language that you can choose from the list. Now, they are square brackets, which means they're optional. So if I just close my brackets there, it will translate this into towel, which is French to English. It does that because it auto detects this as French and it, towel in English is the default on my computer. So if I drag that down, I get it showing like that. By the way, if you don't want it to do this issue, you can click on there and fill without formatting. And then you get the border that comes back. Really useful tip, but not a new feature. So you also have in this column, I can go to insert and checkbox. And then I have the checkboxes like this. I can also multi-select and press space to tag them or untick them. And if I want to get rid of them, I can press delete. We'll untick them all and delete again. We'll get rid of them. They evaluate to true. By the way, the ones with a star are not available in every Microsoft 365 version at the moment. You should be able to get them all by July of 2025. But I'll show you how to check which versions you are because they are available on the current channel, all of them. Unique function, this one's available to everyone, equals unique. And I can select all of these, close my brackets, and I get this. There are three unique items there. Now it does this in a blue outlined area, which is called a dynamic array. And one feature of a dynamic array is you can actually refer to it and then it has the hash symbol regardless of whether it starts or ends. Now this is dynamic, so if I have a new feature or a new thing in here, then it will now become four and this hash will also expand to four. So these are really, really useful new ways that Excel does formulas. And there are lots of other formulas around them. I'm just gonna show you a few here. So equals group by, this is a great one, just got released. So I can say that I want to group by the product comma, and then I have the country like this, and then I can choose the function. Now you can choose sum or average. This is kind of creating a pivot table inside a formula, but you have some other benefits like a rate of text I really like, whereby it will tell you listed with a comma separated list, all of the countries that are related to bath mats. So Oman and Syria is there, Sponge is UK, Italy, Ireland. So that's these three. It is dynamic, so it updates automatically which a pivot table does not. So now Brazil is now also in bath mats, which is pretty cool. And you have other optional inputs, for example, what to do with the headers, the totals, and sort orders, etc. This one is a brand new one. So this is actually also a star like that. So you also have focus cell, another star one. There are lots of non-star ones as well that I'll go through. So in the view tab, you have this one, and this will just kind of put the cross section, so it's easier to see. You can change the color as well and do other features with it. I'm gonna take that off. Then you also have evaluate. So let's say that you have a formula and you want to do something intermittently. So I wanna check what A5 is, I can select that and it will just show me what is over there intermittently. Here in group by, it can do it for lots of cells and show me in the list. Or you can click on there and see it. You can also select the whole formula and see what the output is in total. So let's evaluate formula. Also, if you want to convert formulas to values, you can do a paste special with just values. Control shift V is the shortcut to do that. So it's like a special version of control V, which is regular paste. Show changes in the review tab, you have this and it will give you cell by cell who has edited what. So now if I remove this one and change this to something else, I can see that it has done that, see new changes, and I can even click on a couple of cells and choose show changes, and it will show me how it has changed and multiple changes if there are multiple changes like that. 
Now, this only works if you save it on the cloud, OneDrive or SharePoint. Check performance. So in the review tab, also you have check performance. This will scan your workbook for any part where there is something that is unneeded. So for example, here, I have made these blue cells and they are very much outside of my data range. Or sometimes I have just made these cells red text and you can't even see it, but it is a formatting thing. Then you can do check again. But what is really cool is you can actually choose optimize sheet or backwards optimize all and this will then remove all the ones that you need. Now, this is really useful because it means that it will reduce the bloated file size that may otherwise come about. Another formula that is a dynamic array as well, let me minimize this, is called VStack. So expand this one. So equals VStack will stack two vertical tables together. So this is my first one, and array number two is this one. Close my brackets, and then you can stack them. You also have H stack to do it horizontally, but I find V stack is usually what you need. They are dynamic, so if this country changes, for example, to Israel, then it will change in here as well. All right, so let's go to the next one. So let's say that you have a formula that is really hard to write. For example, I want a formula that can actually extract the email address from this sentence wherever that is. And there is a new function called regextract. There are three new regex functions that uses a complex code to do that, but you don't want to know what the code is, so you can use Copilot. And I love Copilot. It's something you can get on a free version or a paid version. So here I want to extract it from cell B6. That's important to note. And let's go here, and I'm going to go to Copilot. To run an Excel formula to extract an email address from B6 using regextract, for example, Please email blah becomes just the email address. Key things to note, always say it's an Excel formula, reference the cell. That way it becomes easy to do with copy and paste. If you know the formula, sometimes it will be better if you say it, but usually you don't need to. And I like to do an example so that it knows what to do. So I'm going to select this, and then here I'm just going to paste it in this cell like that, and then it will just extract that. And I can drag it down and double click, and it will do that exactly. It's actually the same formula. You also have a paid version of Copilot that comes here on the Excel Home tab. And I can say, for example, highlight cells that have the word analytics. And I can say conversationally, make it green instead. Copilot costs $20 per month or $30 per month, depending on which version you get. And both of them come built into Excel. All right, I'm going to click apply. There we go. So a key difference between the paid version is that it does things in context. Like we've just seen here, you can also add a formula column. You can do certain types of analytics. You can do text analytics. And the list is expanding as it keeps doing more and more and more stuff. All right, let's go back. Next one is XLOOKUP. And this has been around for a while, but only in the 2020s. If you're using VLOOKUP, stop, because XLOOKUP is just way better. So I can write equals XLOOKUP. And I have my lookup value, which is going to be the email. My lookup array is going to be this. I'm going to press F4 to lock that in. My return array is going to be the gender, like that, F4. Close my brackets because the others are optional, and I can just drag it down like that. So you don't have to count the number of columns, and it's also got a lot more benefits. You can use this for a horizontal or a vertical lookup. And most importantly, you can say equals X lookup of this one. My lookup array can be here. F4, and because it's just a column that you're specifying, the return array can also be there. And then if not found, I can say check. That's another benefit. And let's say that this one is blank. Usually it would give me an NA, but if I replace it with check, it will just show it to me like that. Another cool function is text before. I can say equals text before. And I can say from this one, give me everything before the, in speech marks, the at symbol. And it will just give me the alias, kind of like that. Or if I want both, you get text split. And I can say this one, column delimiter will be the at symbol. And then the others are all optional. I'm going to leave them blank. And then it does return it as a dynamic array. You can see the blue outline, unless it gives you an error like that. 
But if I was to just drag this down, then I get it working everywhere. Keep going, images. Now you have the ability to insert an image, pictures, pictures in cells. So we go, here's my YouTube thumbnails. I can just multi-select some and press insert, and it will just do that in cell. I can click there to extract it, or I can also, from another picture, I can place in cell. You also have picture in cell, some options here as well. And these work inside pivot tables and inside filters. They will work if you give it some alt text. Otherwise, it will just say picture that. You also have Python brand new in the formulas tab. You can now insert Python into Excel and they've released some new templates with it, which is pretty cool. So I can go to file and new and here I can search for QR. And you have a QR code generator, which uses Python as specified. And you can just say what a certain email address is. So I'm going to say my company email address. And then it will update this to have that. I can have different styles. No time to go through Python, but if you want any in-depth videos about any of the features I'm showing, I have pretty much one for all of them. Link to arrange, so you can select some cells and right click and go to link to this range and it will create a link just to that range. Now the person who you are sending this to does have access to everything, but they will be taken directly to that range that you specified. So here I have some data with a table in it that is in a picture. Now I can convert this from a picture into actual data. If you go to the data tab, you have from picture and in drop down you have picture from clipboard. Now I tend to first take a screenshot, even if it is an image file, a screenshot can mean I can specifically draw around what I want. Windows Shift S will allow you to do this. Forget print screen, print screen is so inefficient. So from picture, I'm going to do picture from clipboard, and then you get this on the right that appears. Now you can click on something you're not sure about and edit it or go to review and it will do kind of a spell check. If you click accept, accept, etc. close. What I tend to do is just press insert data and then check them manually afterwards. It's never perfect, but it's often going to be a lot better than what you would get if you needed to do it yourself here. For example, I need to switch that to a dot. And here, I don't want a comma there. That's way too high. That's a dot as well. Perfect. Scrolling across, you also have a few more things. So I also have this one, which is an exchange rate. And in the data tab, I can choose currencies. And I can also then extract with this, I can extract the price. This is going to be the price currently right now. I can also right click and choose data type. That's what they've chosen to call it. And I can choose the refresh settings. And you can see that it does refresh stocks. It includes currencies automatically every five minutes, but yeah, I can change that to one of these things. You also have stocks and geography, but they're not new, but this one is the currencies one. And if you want to get the currency exchange rate for a previous stage, which is very common, particularly for accounting transactions, you can type a date in the cell and you have this new function called equals stock history. Stock history takes the stock, which could be the currency pair. I'm going to click on that, I'm going to press comma, and then the start date is going to be this one. The other ones are square brackets, means they're optional. Close my brackets and I get the date and the close. You can keep going though, and this is pretty cool. You can also say comma the end date, and the end date can be today using the today function. And then I'm going to say the interval, I can click on say weekly. I'm going to leave the others blank. And then it's going to calculate the exchange rate every single day from the date I specified. Control down right until today's date. And it is going to update and add a new row every day in this file, which is pretty awesome. Navigation tab. So in the view tab, you have navigation. This opens up the navigation pane and you have your list of worksheets. These are the hidden ones and you can just click to go to them. You can also search if you know something is called new. It will search for that. You also have subdividers for anything like a table or an object, but I tend to not use those as much. I just like the head page like this. Finally, unhide multiple. So if you right click, you can choose unhide. That's not new. But before you had to unhide one by one, now you can control click or shift click and press OK, and it will hide all of them in one go. 
So do you have these features? Well, if you have Excel 2019 or older, you don't because you don't have anything that dates from the 2020s. If you have 2021, you have a few of them. If you have 2024, you have some of them. If you have Microsoft 365, you should have all of them. Now, the ones that are with a star, you'll only have if you're on Microsoft 365 and the current channel. But if you are in another release cadence of Microsoft 365, you will get these updates later on in the year, which shouldn't be later than July of this year. To check which version you have, go to File and then Account. And then here you'll see whether you're on the beta channel or you might see current channel, you might see monthly enterprise channel or semi-annual channel. And if you have Excel 2024, then it will say that and not this. Here I have Microsoft 365 apps. So that means I get the releases every month. And there is a bunch of other new stuff. But if you look in my other videos, you'll be able to see that. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. My name is David Benheim, and I love talking about the new stuff that gets released to Excel.